us, Lord. Father, you are good. As I think about the body, you know, um, anytime I think about the body of Christ, you know, the Bible tells us that we would crucify our flesh. And God would never tell us to do something that he couldn't do himself. And so when I think about communion, I think about denying myself for the sake of my soul. It's not even just for the sake of the kingdom. It's for the sake of my soul. So, you know, 2022 has been a long year for many of us. Um, trials, tribulations. But it was never something that broke us to the point where we couldn't stand here today. That's right. And so as we partake of the bread, let us remember that it is the Last Supper. And we should treat it like that. It's the last that we will, with, our, with every fiber in our being, to try not to repeat that sin. It's the last in which we know that we've done wrong. Let's not try to repeat it again. Amen. It's the last in which we were dead, but now we're alive. It's the last. Amen? Amen. Let's partake. As I stand here today and I think about all the things that God has taken us out of. And it was always because of what he had done on the cross. Dying for us on that cross is because he loves us so much. He loves us so much like if it's just one of us. That's how much he loves us. He says all of us are his favorites. There is no other father like that in the universe. So thinking about what he's done and how many times we have made mistakes, I probably say to the Lord, um, sorry, and we go ahead and we make the same mistake again, over and over again. But he still sees the light that he put and instilled in us. He sees that light still. That's why he's always willing to take us back he sees us as pure children let's try in 2023 to be his pure children Amen. Amen. show it to him and also as I stay, stand here there's so much that is happening in the midst of this service yeah. that we're hearing um, between Lucy's sister and now we're hearing Maria Vega had to be rushed to the hospital uh -huh. God is doing something in this. Amen. Come on. I know it sounds sad, but he's doing a new beginning. Do you see the day that he chose? Yeah. God is in the midst of every single thing, whether we see it or not. He is there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter. Yeah, we go through all these trials, and yes, we go all this pain and all these tribulations that are happening in our life and we just don't understand or we don't have the answers for. But the one answer that I can give you and guarantee to you is that the Father is always there and he is reliable. Yes. Yes. His blood was shed and poured out for every single one of us. It doesn't matter what you have done in your past. Amen. Your past is your past. You are renewed when you said, God, I am for you and I surrender it all and your salvation was installed in you. You have given yourself to him and that is it. You have tied the knot, you have nailed the nail. God is 
here to restore your life. Receive it. Stop lingering. <clears throat> Stop thinking about all these things that has happened in your life, all these negativity things that are on the streets and in the news. Don't worry about that. He got it. He knows what he's doing in 2023. That's right. That's right. The kids that all of you have that are still not here today, guess what? 2023 may be that year. Amen. Whether they come to boom or not. The mothers that are here today, you have instilled the seed inside of them, and that seed will blossom. Amen. It doesn't matter what is happening. Trust in him and have the faith in him. He restores all. He is the healer of all time. He is the redeemer of all time. His ups, he, he should be our obsession. Yes, right. amen. Amen. Because he's obsessed over us. That's right. <laughs> he runs after us over and over and over again. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? The creator, the creator, the king runs after you. Even all the mistakes that we have done, he runs after you. The creator. The creator, the one and only, that can have anything, that can do anything. He wants you. That's, That's all he wants. He wants you. He wants your heart. And I'm telling you, it's not easy. Because it's not supposed to be. Because guess what? If it was, we wouldn't need him. So I just pray, Lord God, and Thank you, my glorious king, for the blood that you have shed for each and every person here and throughout the entire world, Lord God, that you have created. That you humbled yourself, Lord God, Lord King. You humbled yourself for our sins, Lord God, that we still do today. Lord God, I thank you for this year that you have put in front of us that is approaching Lord God and the years that are approaching so quickly is just to get closer to you for your return so I thank you Heavenly Father again for your beautiful blood that just covers us that just heals us that just loves us Lord God we thank you eternally Heavenly Father for being the father that we need every moment for being there every moment, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God. And I thank you for the battles that you stand with us. Through the storms, Lord God, that you stand with us, Lord God. That is when it's in your will, Lord God, you make every single thing right. That's right. We bless your holy name and we give you thanks. Let's take his blood. You guys want the word? Yes. Amen. No? All right. Amen. <laughs> Whenever a year passes, time passes and reminds us of where we came from. A new year gives us an opportunity to redefine what we are purposed for. Are the things that I'm doing the same, going in the same direction as when I started? Are the things that I'm doing important? See, we can't mix up important with urgent. And some of us make what's important 
or what's not important, urgent, right. right? A new year gives us an opportunity to redefine our purpose. Are we still on course? Our vision. Do we know exactly what we need to do for the next 25 years? Is that vision on paper? Right? The Bible says, write it down and run with it. Is it worthwhile? It gives us an opportunity to create something worthwhile. Is what you have worthwhile? You can establish goals that waste your time because they don't take you to your vision. Just because you establish something and you work towards it doesn't mean it works towards what God has purposed you for. That's right. yeah. Don't be afraid to give up the things that are not important anymore. The people that may be holding you back. Don't be afraid to confess. I was a little off, God, but I'm ready to come back. Amen. It's better to do it now than to try it later. A new year gives us an opportunity to bury the past. Amen. 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 Look at your neighbor. Tell him, get over it. Get over it. I said, tell him, get over it. Whatever it was, tell him, whatever it was, get over it. They have no job. Leave the baggage that you had in 2022 in 2022. Get yourself together. Cut yourself loose. Change is powerful. Amen? Yes, amen. I want you to call me to the book of uh, Ephesians. Ephesians 5, verse 14. You got that, Mama Carol? Ephesians 5, verse 14. Amen. Amen. I love Paul because Paul starts off with this. It says, therefore, he says, awake. That's a powerful word. Awake. Get up. You who sleep, arise from the dead and Christ will give you light. Yes. See then that you, you walk um, circumspectly not as fools but as wise redeeming the time because the days are evil therefore do not be unwise but understand what the will of the Lord is so Paul gives us the wake up call he wasn't talking about people who are actually sleeping in the physical right. he was talking about those who are already up but not up you see you could be up but be sleepwalking it don't mean you're yeah. awake. Yeah. That's right. Paul says, awake. And then what does he say? Arise. You could wake up at 7, come to church and still not be awake. Yeah. And why does he say arise? Because God can't show you something if you're not up. Amen. So first he says, awake. And then he says what? Arise. Once you are up, now God, that the light of God, right? It says here, arise from the dead and Christ will give you light. He will show you the things that cause you to be dead. See, some of us are stuck at the same place. And we think because we're awake, we can move past it. Some of us, God is shedding light on things in which we need to leave, right? That's why he says that he sh it sheds light on the dead, on what is dead, our lifestyle, our circumstances. Amen. Come on, the, the behaviors that we continue to, to, to do over and over and over, and guess what? It's like someone comforting you to go back to sleep when you can't sleep. How many times do you go to sleep and you're restless and you want, you die? Listen, I'll be on my truck and I'll be dying to hit that bed. And when I hit that bed, I can't sleep. There's nights that I just can't, I, so I, I just can't, but I'm exhausted. 
It's because I haven't changed. Mm. It's something I'm doing wrong. Mm. Or maybe it's not time to go to sleep. Because God wants to speak to you. We have to change our conditions. The word rise means to do. See, when it says rise, it's self done. It's mm-hmm. our, it's it's up to us to make it happen. Right. Amen. See, when God tells us to do things or just because God is in it, it doesn't mean that he does it for us. We have to initiate that so that he can partake. Yes. Yes. And some of us are stuck because we're waiting for God to do it for us. A kid asked me the other day, Jose, you mean to tell me, you mean to tell me that if I don't accept the God that you believe in, that I'm going to hell? Why is that fair? So I said, Jonathan, let me just explain something to you. Your mother, your dad, put you on a boat. You ain't got a choice. You're a kid. Let's go. We're going on a boat. Right? You're in the middle of the ocean. The boat begins to sink. A savior comes by. You got an option in the place of death to choose to get on a boat or not you're in a dying world you got an option to choose Christ or not it's up to you and he looked at me and he cried and he said I never understood how the world could be dying just think about that young kid 22 years old see We only want to accept someone to save us when we're in the midst of death in in the physical. But just because you're surviving this doesn't mean you're going to heaven. We think because, aha, we made it through 2022, we making it. No, you may be digging a deeper ditch for yourself to be buried in. So are you choosing this opportunity to move further? To look, to look more like Christ? Amen. Or are you using this opportunity to be comforted in the bed in which you've made that you call life, but is really death? Arise. Some translations say, shine, that God will shine. Shine means expose. He will expose those things in your life. Some of us don't want to wake up because we don't want him to expose those things. Here we are, 2023. If you want to change, exposure got to take place. Come on, you look at photography. You change your lighting. Some things you see exposed, you're like, hold on, I didn't see that in the original. Mm-hmm. We think we live in a life. God starts... The light starts coming out, right? Guys, come on. You look at a girl. She look far, good, good from far, but she gets up close, far from good. <laughs> we may look like that to them, right? Because there's something about the light. There's something about the light, what it does to us. That's why some of us are okay with staying at home and being locked up. Because the more we come out, the more we get exposed. Some of us will go from church to church. Because the more time you spend, the more light gets shown in that friendship. And the more you can see how fake the person is. Amen. Right? People go from church to church. God says walk away from the dead. Walk away from the lifestyle. Why? Because there's a new beginning ahead of you. Amen. 
There's a reason why he's telling you to leave it behind. Because there's something better up ahead. Amen. It's going to hurt. Right? It's going to hurt. It's going to be uncomfortable. But if God be for you, you got to know something is great. Right? Then it says what? See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. Wisdom. Let's just talk about wisdom. The word wisdom here means applied knowledge. See, wisdom is different from understanding. Okay? Understanding means you obtain the knowledge. Knowledge is sources gathered together. Wisdom means that you've applied what you've learned. Right? Yes. Amen? Yes. All right. Stay up. This is why I wanted to do the food at the end. <laughs> God didn't say arise and go back to where you came from. He said arise, walk away from where you came, right? The dead. Check it. And walk in wisdom. Hallelujah. You got to walk in the new. Start to apply all that knowledge. Look, I'm not telling you I give you the best sermons. But I, I believe that I've given enough information in the last year for you to take, come on, and apply it. That's right. And if we would just apply it, you would see a difference in your life. See, some of us are going through the same things that we were going through in 1996. Some of us are sleeping in the same mattress from 1996. <laughs> My wife and I, we just got a new mattress. We got mattresses somebody else was conceived on 25 years ago. <laughs> but God is good. That's right. Huh? It's time to, to step out and create a new place for you. God will give you an opportunity. It's up to us yes. to create a new lifestyle. Some of us want a New Year's resolution. We don't need another New Year's resolution. We need another New Year's revelation. Yes, that's right. See, when you get a New Year's resolution, it's because it's man-inflicted. It's up to us to make it happen. When you get a revelation, it's because God needs to come in and help you make it happen. We need a revelation. Amen. Now, I don't know about you, but I want a New Year's um, revelation. Now check it real quick because I just felt the need. I wasn't going to tap on this, but you go down to verse 18 and it says, Do not be drunk with wine in which it dissip and, um, is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. What Paul is telling them there is this. Stop consuming the things in which alter the way you think. Yeah. Right? If God tells you to walk in wisdom, walking in wisdom doesn't need Tylenol PM, cocaine, yeah. weed, Amen. alcohol. Amen. Some of us, you notice that people get super emotional when they drink? Yeah. Yeah. I used to be one of those. Yes. I love everybody. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That ain't the true love of Christ. That's right. That's right. That's right. If you can't be that sober, then that ain't you. Or so then you get the ones that Oh, they want to tell you all about yourself. <laughs> right? They say what? Drunken mind speaks sober thoughts? <laughs> that happens because we're not honest with who we are in the soberness. And so here Paul is saying, you walk in wisdom, but walking in wisdom doesn't mean that you take all these things to show that you're smart. Because then some of us drink. Right? Or we do whatever we do, and now we want to talk about everything because we know everything. You get that I don't care moment inside of you, yeah. mm -hmm. right? When you drink or when you're under the influence, you get that I don't care what people think, right? People that normally don't dance, yeah. be all over the dance floor. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. You get those moments. And Paul is saying, you don't need this to be who you are in there. If it alters how you think and it doesn't give you the full mind of Christ, 
then you don't need it. Walk away from the dead. And some things in our lives and some people, see, we could come to church and be surrounded by each other. And now we all of a sudden think differently. We speak different. But then we don't come to church for two or three weeks, and now we start sounding like the people we've been with for two or three weeks. Church, it's time for change. Yes, amen. It's time to be an influence in that circle and bring them to the body of Christ. That's right, amen. Some of us are wondering why our kids haven't changed. Well, some of our kids don't come to church because they see what you look like at home. Now, I understand that people are going to be people, but it's hard for me to understand how you can't show the love of Christ to that extent to where it will provoke someone to come to see where you got it from. I'm sorry, but if you ain't coming to church with your family and you're not excited, maybe it's because you really don't believe in what you serve. It's time for change. I believe that this year, so the first year was a year of pruning, right? Last year, I forgot, what was last year? You remember? Unity? Yeah, this year, 2022. 2022 was a year of unity, I think. Yeah, that's what my wife said. I ain't say it. But this year, I believe, is a year of application. I want you all to, to, today to go home, and I want you to text my wife and I or email us. I want to create a gift for you. Nothing crazy. It won't cost the church much. Pick one word, one word for the year, and I want to make a postcard so that you can post it. This year, my word is complete. Mm. I am sick of saying that I'm going to do something or start doing something and I don't complete it. It's time that I complete everything that I start. If God said he who began a good work in me will continue until it's complete, I'm going to complete what I say I'm going to do. I don't know what word it is for you today, but I, I encourage you to think about as this service goes on, as we worship into the new year, one word. Put it up on your mirror. My wife is going to be upset at me, but for the next 21 days, I want to write with a dry erase on. I have nice big mirrors in my room, and I want to write that word on my mirror. And God is telling me that I need to wake up at 3 in the morning. So I wake up at 4 for work, but he's like, no, I want you to wake up at 3 for me. I believe that this year something is going to happen. I don't know yes. what it That's is. Right. Amen. I don't know if it's a revival in your home. I don't know if it's a revival here. I don't know. But God said that there will be a great falling away first. Not a revival. That the church will break up. Who's truth or who's false? The sheep's from the wolves. That's right. Amen. And I believe we're going through that season. And I'm okay with the church splitting up. I'm Listen, yeah. I'm not here in arrogance or to tell you that I don't care if you're here or not. But if you know my heart and we serve the same God, then you understand and you empathize with me and you know that I only want what's best for the kingdom. That's right, amen. You know, my wife and I, we had a little di- um, disagreement today because we wasn't dressed up. And I felt, because I'm like, if we got dressed up in all black for the clubs, why we can't do it for the gospel? Like, that's how I felt. She wanted to come comfortable to worship. And I'm like, that's impossible when my, my pants are too tight. I can't come. You understand? Like, I can't come to church dressed up for the new year. So then I had to, like, change. But change had to take place. And sometimes it's uncomfortable. And sometimes it don't feel good. But when it's not about you, it doesn't matter what it's about. As long as it furthers the kingdom. It's not about you. It's not about her. It's not about my kids. It's about God. And it's time for change. Yes. All right, I'm not done. I don't know where that came from, but. Have a revolution. Psalms 1. Do not include the power of God, but what you really need is not another year resolution, but a new year revelation. Um, Psalms 1, verse 1 to 3 says, The way of the righteous and the end of the ungodly, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law, he mediates um, days and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, 
whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. So I want to reason with you this thought. What God is going to allow us to see in the new year. Not because we're so good, but because he's so good. God's heard our petitions. He's entertained our supplications. Answered our prayers. Healed our bodies. Directed us, prepared us, redeemed us. Restored us and blessed us in 2022. Now it's time that we start changing for the world. Amen. And if the truth be told, we hear about resolutions changing from habits to fitness goals, right? What we want to stop, what we want to start. But sometimes I think we make unrealistic goals. It becomes discouraging. My goal is to go to the gym six days a week, but you barely make it there twice. Mm. Start off with two. Then move to three. Mm. I'm going to read the Bible from front to back, but you have yet to read one scripture. Read one scripture a day. Then start off with two. Then a chapter. Read a Bible story with your kids. My goal, right, is to read the Bible in 60 days. You don't even pick up your Bible. Right? I'm one of those. I start looking at the Bible app. Right? I want to do this plan, this plan, this plan. And in three days, I look at it, and it's like, you're like 1,800 pages behind. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> start from new. <laughs> and every day, I'm going to wait till Monday. Right? You ever hear that? We're going to start on Monday. I'm going to wait till Monday. It's too many Mondays. Right, right. Start now. Right. Amen. Start now and tomorrow be different. See, if you start now, tomorrow be day two. That's right. You start Monday, you got to wait. You already lost three days. Start now. The text mentions three groups of people. The ungodly, the sinner, and the scornful. The ungodly are those who sin knowingly and feel no conviction. The sinners are those who sin openly. And the scornful are those who sin and encourage others to join them. And what does he tell, what, what does he tell us? In 2023, if you're going to be blessed by separating yourself from those type of people, for my sake, then you do it. You start hanging around wolves, guess what? You'll start howling like one. You ever see those Instagram videos where there's small little goats, they're hopping, and you get baby dogs, and they start hopping like the, because they're believing that they're goats. I said in the sermon, just because you sleep in a garage don't make you a car. You got to know who you are. And you can't apply something if you're still trying to figure out who you are. It is important that we find out who we are first before we think we can lead a people. Second Corinthians, Paul says, Therefore, come out from amongst them and be separate, says the Lord. Do not touch what is unclean, and I will receive you. When we start to stand out, God will use us. God will see us. A lot of times we start off like that here, and we leave those double doors, and everything changes. Now we look like everybody else. I preached to you guys a few months ago, and I said, we're not to cut off people. I don't want you guys to think I'm a hypocrite, right? I said that we're to love on them. 
I'm telling you now not to be with those people. I'm not telling you to cut them off. What I'm saying is you got to get yourself together before you can minister to them. That's what I'm saying. You don't isolate yourself from them because you may be the only gospel they see. That's right. But if you want to be the real gospel, the living gospel of Jesus Christ, you got to know who you are. And some of us like to one foot in, one foot out. 2023. It's going to be epic. Yes, it is. The prayers that we've been waiting for. Yes. 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 Amen. The loss that we've been praying for. Amen. Yes. Things are going to change. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And even when our circumstance don't change, you know what changes? Us and our hearts. Amen. The first, you know, this is what I love about Christ. When I get into a bad situation, the first thing I do is I don't complain. I, gl- I give glory to God that I still have the opportunity to go through that. Because there's something that he's doing there. And since I've been doing that, God, my perspective has been changing. You know, right away I would flip on somebody like, yo, what you doing? And now I'm like, Lord, I just thank you for them. Show me what they're hurting in. Right? Show me what they're going through. And I think sometimes or well, what we've been facing in 2022 is that we're so worried about ourselves and surviving. Especially after the pandemic. Everybody's all about survival. I don't care what you think. I'm wearing a mask. I don't care what you think. I ain't going if there's not everybody's not social distance. Oh, it's more than 10 people who's going? Oh, I ain't going. And we get so caught up. And I'm not saying not to use wisdom. But what I'm saying is that we get to so caught up in what we want ourselves that we neglect what God wants to do in us through people. I love that this is all we have. I love it. That I can see everybody and know you guys by name. Know your situations. You can know mine. And know that I can pray with you. I think you put up a post the other day, right? Get friends that will pray behind you. Pray behind your back. 2023. (coughs) I want people that's going to pray for me. Even when they... They don't even got to tell me that they're praying for me. That... When, when, I'm, when I'm praying in the midst that I can, I can sense them. And I don't like to use the word sense, but I, can, I, I know that I know that I know that they're at war with me in the spirit. That people are fasting for me even when I can't fast. Amen. Amen. That people are on their knees even when I can't get down on my knees. That's what 2023 is going to bring. Amen. Those type of people. That people like Maria... No matter where she is, she's praying for body in one ministry. Amen. Pastor Frank, Lady Agnes, 6 o'clock in the morning, 6 o'clock at night, they're praying for body in one ministries in New York City. That we can do that ourselves. Maria is being rushed to the hospital, and here we are praying for her. That's right, amen. So that when... You know, we prayed, Lord, that they won't feel alone, that you would comfort them, Amen. that she can feel the comfort of her people. Amen. 2023. I'm tired of New Year's resolutions. I want a fresh revelation. Hallelujah. I want I want a godly encounter. Amen. I don't want something. Listen, I want a guidance. I want God to tell me what he wants me to change in that revelation so that I can do it. Not leave it up to him to change the circumstance. When God tells us that we would trample on um, snakes and scorpions, it's when we go. See, you can't trample on something when you don't approach it. That's right. It's when we approach that atmosphere, when we when we walk into that place that people can sense him. Amen. That's what I want. People watching these Netflix series, chilling in, on their couch, thinking that they're warring. Because they're watching godly movies. And there's nothing wrong with that. But that ain't a prayer life. It's 
not a prayer life. Stop stuffing your face. Get in that corner. Mm-hmm. Learn what it is to starve in the flesh. That's right. So that you can see God in the spirit. I want that outer body experience. Amen. <laughs> My wife be floating. I be down looking at her like, what you doing up there? <laughs> and because it's uncomfortable, I'm okay with staying down here. Enough of that. That's right, amen. I'm ready to go where God wants me to go. 2023, look, I keep saying it, it's going to be an, a crazy That's year. Right. And just as it is crazy glorious, it's going to be war. Right. And I'm ready for it. Amen. There's nothing like knowing I got that armor. Mm-hmm. That every day when I put on that armor of God, that nothing, nothing can strike it. And guess what? If I get hit, you know why? It's not God. It's because I've turned my back. Because had I been facing the right direction, he would have shown me. Because God is not a God that shall lie. He gives it to us. And so I pray that as we worship into this new year, that you would go with that unction, that boldness of letting go what was behind. And yes, leaving that person may be uncomfortable. Moving out, that may be uncomfortable. But that has to happen in order for the comforter to comfort you. When will change take place? See, if God is our comforter, then we have to make it our opportunity to be uncomfortable. You have to create those situations for him to comfort you. It's not just talking about in your sickness that he comforts you. No. Make a change. In 2023, make a change. Do something that you will intentionally put yourself in. I'm not saying don't pay your bills. Or get evicted to see the power of God. What I'm saying is, do something. If you're not married and you're not with and you with a person, I don't care if you were with them for 40 years. Leave them or get married. Amen. Change. You've been doing that same thing that nobody can see. Stop doing it. Change. Amen. You've been going to that same place that nobody knows because everybody sleep when you go. Change. It's time for us to change. And then we wonder why we don't have what we think we should have in the spirit. It's because you could only go but so far. I used to sit back and tell my wife, I don't know how. These people, we know these big people that we know some of their sins. We know what they're doing. And they out there getting paid thousands and thousands. Jumping from church to church. (coughs) And nobody knows what's going on. But then they hit a wall. Because, see, your gift could only take you but so far. That's right. That's right. If it ain't anointed with the Spirit of God, if it ain't sent by God, Amen. then it's going to come to an end. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm ready for change. Amen. 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 Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word, Lord. We thank you for 2022. As we enter 2023, Lord, a new start, a new beginning, oh God that we know that you are already there waiting for us. Father, open up our eyes to let go of the things, the scenes, the people that we need to let go of. It's not in our control, but in yours. Lord, we want to go where you are leading us, not where we want to go. Our flesh means nothing. We are here as communion to crucify our flesh daily, to live a life for you. We are drowning in a world that is dead and sinful. We want you to save us, oh God. We choose to follow you, Lord. Have your way in our lives, oh God. Show us your ways. As your word says, we want to hate what you hate and love what you love. That all we do, that will, it will edify your name, edify the body, and edify one another. That the things in which we say and do will raise each other up in your ways, oh God. That we will stop calling conviction sin. And we will start calling conviction change and holiness. That we will enter a season of holiness, oh God. Father, we're not here for attendance. 
We're not here for self-glorification. We are here to know more of your heart. That we can love like you, oh God. That we can be who you have called us to be. We're not here to prove each other wrong, oh God. But to show one another who you created us to be. Beauty and splendor and glory. That when we move, that when we step, that when we go, that it's you they will see. Father, because when you went on the cross, your word says that when people see us, they see you. And when they see you, they see us. Because the Father gave the one who was with no sin, our sin. That's what your word tells us. That you became sin, which means you were us, so that we can be you. Lord, let us be that to the world. Let us show the world and the lost that it is you in us, the hope of glory. Father, we thank you, we honor you, and we bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys, those who are joining online. Listen, we're going to stay live into the new year. Um, tomorrow there's no service. This video will stay posted. But if you want prayer, please excuse me, take time out to reach out to my wife and I or any of the leaders. If you have their information, give us a call, and we would love to pray for you. Um, stay tuned. If you want um, those who are signed up through our Space Wix app, we will be emailing you um, different fast and um, the Daniel Fast prayer. So the 21 days that we pray. Remember, the Daniel Fast will start on the second. Um, we thank you guys again for joining us. God bless you and enjoy your new year. Amen. Amen. Okay, guys, what we're going to do now is you guys want to eat something. We have um, Thank you.